Oh, What's cheers, going on, man. Dude? Cheers. First beers of the day. How you feeling today? How's everybody feeling out there tonight? <laughs> I'm feeling all right. Feeling pretty good? How you feel about your yeah. Eagles today? Well, they don't play today. They play tomorrow. Oh, is it a Monday night, I guess? Yeah, 830 yeah. versus the Vikings. Okay, yeah, I knew the Vikings played somebody, but I can't remember that, who they played. Uh, what does this beer remind you? Have, have you taken a sip yet? I haven't. Tell me what it reminds you of. My first my first thought is, um, I don't know if you'll have the first thought I did. We're drinking, uh, everybody, we're drinking Terrapin High and Hazy, if you are wondering. Kiss the skies on the can. I like that blue. I, that's actually a really cool fucking yeah. can design. Yeah, I've tried something. That's, uh, it reminds me of something, but I can't think of what it, it is. It reminds me of Lagunitas. See, I started. I actually got a six pack of Lagunitas uh, Monday or Friday. I'm sorry, that was your favorite for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, and it like it just it didn't hit like it used to. Yeah, that's how it goes. You know, that's it, how it goes. You know, the beers kind of come in like especially with IPAs, they right. kind of come in waves. I guess. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, it just didn't hit like it used to. I still got three down there. I bought a I six pack. I was gonna drink all six, and I only drank three. I don't even know what beer I'm drinking now. I went to the gas station last night on the way home from work, and. I picked up a six pack of Voodoo because that's what they had. Yeah, and it was good. It was good, but that was it. I mean, it wasn't like phenomenal. Like I wasn't wanting Voodoo. I was wanting something different. Was it there just IPA? Yeah, just the orange. Oh, the, yeah, the orange yellow, can. Yeah, yeah, yellow orange can. Yellow. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. So last night we went out to. I told you we went out to see uh, Dusty Slay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Death. <laughs> yeah, that a really good comedian. And uh, at the Comedy Zone, which is a cool spot. It's my oh, first yeah, time cool, out cool, there. Cool. Yeah, really cool venue. Uh, so you like you'll they don't you don't have like tickets to scan or anything they'll put you on like a will call and you'll stand out in line and we met uh the crab man and his wife out there and it okay, was a, cool. it was, yeah. it was a good, yeah, I saw pictures yeah it was a cool time man oh yeah dude. Uh, the first com- comedian was he was okay he's like a local comic you know he made like a joke about pelzer and stuff of course so. okay yeah so he, he wasn't That's too easy, bad it's an easy target yeah <laughs> it's an easy yeah. target and uh shout out to the people from pelzer and uh one of us. for sure for sure <laughs> uh then the second guy was actually pretty good it was actually really good. He kept like, he would reference stuff and then later on he'd come back to it. You know how comedians will come back to certain Yeah, the jokes. callback. The callback, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, if he, you don't, he, if you don't know what a callback is, <laughs> he, uh, he had a lot of, he has a lot of potential. Then Dusty's like came out and just murdered it. I mean, he absolutely crushed yeah, it. He just, just smashed it, crushed murdered. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, man. And it was a good time. He, he was talking about how sticky the floors are because after, after huh. the show's over, you go down these stairs. You, a different way than you came in. So yeah. you go down the stairs, like this whole bar and basement downstairs. Pretty like nice a little place. Dan Cook joke coming. And uh, <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, I got down there to do the pictures or whatever. I was like, I'm gonna be honest, man. I didn't come down here to take a picture with you. I just wanted to see how sticky the floors were. <laughs> he started laughing. I was just laughing, man. But uh, yeah, they were like insanely sticky. Like wow. if you have flip flops on, they might come off. <laughs> they might come <laughs> like off. You're stepping in the fucking river <laughs> yeah. in the sand below you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was man. fun, man. Dude, so I have, this is the first time I've ever wore this hat with this jersey. And it's kind of funny because you got me both of them. You got oh, me the nice, hat, yeah. I, think, I think it did. I think I think Heather might have got me the hat. The hat, yeah. And you got me the jersey for Christmas the next year. Yeah. But it works out perfect because it's the exact same as that, uh, the Kelly Green, the Eagle Kelly oh, Green. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's cool, man. I like yeah, it. I like, I like the classic. A little bit. Yeah. I like the classic Eagles look for, for sure. sure. <laughs> for sure, man. For sure. <laughs> I like this can, man. It's a cool fucking can. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I like it so much. It's like a travel, a little, little travel looking. Oh man, what if what if they start bringing the travel tattoos back? It'd be fucking sick, bruh. Do you remember like like that was big around the uh around the arm? It was like the travel like Anthony Kiedis oh, has. Dude, the That's two like so weird. Man. It's like the affliction t shirts and the tap out. The, yeah, tap out. Yeah. That's still the shit though. Let's what was honest. the uh, the mean eyes? What was the what do you call those? Oh, bad boy, bad boy. Yeah, yeah the bad boy shorts. Off. There is uh, there's something that. Venom. Venom. Venom was, yeah, Venom was another big brand. Venom was a big – and it's still there. It's still here. Yeah, though. yeah. Venom's huge yeah. still. So they kind of hung on, but like tap yeah, out. Awesome. And bad Boy. Bad yeah. Boy's still kind of hung on a little bit. Really? You I see Bad Boy a little bit. I, don't really, I feel like I don't see it as much as I do in, oh, in the gosh. UFC. Oh, this beer is fucking good. I ain't going to lie to you. Dude, I know. I know. It's good. Uh, uh, I think it's the first time we've ever did a podcast that we hadn't been drinking before the podcast. Yeah, this is our first beer. Which usually we'll have like three or four, three or, or four, five. or probably five beers before <laughs> yeah. you can kick this bitch off. But yeah, for sure. But uh, it's our um, it's our second Sunday podcast. I think it's our first, didn't it? No, we did one whenever I came back from uh, Orlando. That we, did we? Yeah, we. I came back from Orlando and I flew in that Sunday. And oh. then we did a podcast on that Sunday. I think it was like our third episode or something. Dude, uh, 
you know what movie I went back and rewatched the other day? Uh, Scarface. Oh my god, dude! That shit it's is intense, so good. It's so intense. It holds up. Yes. And Al Pacino, I mean, Thomas. you know, Tom. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah. To me, if I had to put, if I'm making that list of top ten greatest actors of all time, yes, yes, uh, which we might, which <laughs> we will at some point, yeah, I'm will, sure. sure. But uh, to me, he's just crushed. It. He's gonna be up there for number one. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, he, damn. He is hot take. To me, he can do. We're five minutes in. You're hot take. I'm hot me. take. I don't even think it's that much of a hot take. Like he's in everybody's top five. You know, Al Pacino's fair. up there. Probably if you're, in the top, top if you're in the top five, you're fighting for the one spot. I yeah, guess. yeah, for, for sure. sure, for sure. And if you and if you're in the top fifteen, you can fight for ten. You know right. what I'm saying? So okay, I'm, yeah. I'm listening. I like it. Yeah, I think I would take him over. Uh, and, and I'm a huge Robert De Niro guy. I love yeah. Robert De Niro. Love uh, Jack Nicholson and um, uh, Tom Hanks. Definitely deserves to be in that area. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so many uh, just fucking classic. Daniel Day Lewis, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Those guys are. I've in never that. seen a Daniel Day Lewis film. There will be blood. Is I know. really good. Gangs in New York. My mom went and my mom, not yours, yours not mine, yeah. yours. <laughs> <laughs> my mom went and bought Gangs in New York at like Walmart or something the other day because she found it and they were talking about it. She's like, "You got to watch this fucking movie. It's pretty good." Yeah. And so she found it at Walmart and bought it for me to watch Cameron it. And I saw watch it. Sucks in that film though. Yeah, it sucks. But it, okay. it, she, he does play a really cool. He plays like a butcher in that movie. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I have to watch that. Gangs in New York's like Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, John C. Riley, right? John C. Riley, I think, is in that movie. Yeah, yeah. So, it's kind of exciting. And I mean, I'm, a fan, I'm a fan of John C. Riley for sure. Yeah, I like I like John C. Riley. Yeah. yeah, I liked him in uh, the Perfect Storm. The Perfect Storm's a good movie, dude. Yeah, I was Mark I'm, Wahlberg. Fucking uh, what's his name? The guy that everybody hates. Oh, I, I just I, can't I think of his name. I watched like an hour of it the other day. And dude, you know what a movie I need to watch that uh, I saw a clip of it the other day. It's uh, Brothers. Have you heard of that movie? Yeah, I've seen it in With theaters. To- Toby McGuire and, and Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. It's a uh, it's really and a good Natalie performance. Portman. From Toby McGuire. Toby McGuire. Yes, and I saw the scene where they're. I don't want to spoil anything, but I saw the scene where he's in the kitchen, losing like, his mind, losing his shit. Yeah, and that PTSD kicks in. Yeah, and he pulls a gun out on him. Yeah, oh, that so movie good, was. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't. I haven't seen that since it came out. It was like a 2010 or something. Yeah, so. yeah, about 12 years ago. It was I really some, need to go back and watch it. Uh, that was some good math for you. About 12 years ago, 2010. Uh, you know, quick was, math. That was good. Quick maths. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you've seen it already? No, I haven't seen it. I okay. need to go back. And, I want to go watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but yeah, I, I remember really liking it, but for some reason, uh, I don't know. It was just kind of one of those like, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but it, it, I don't know. It's I remember it being good, especially Toby McGuire's uh, yeah. acting performance. Maybe maybe you need to go back and watch it now, and like you're in your old thirty years plus. Age. Do you know what it's about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm not. I went really big on like the whole. The plot. Yeah. Just like the guy, you know, he's supposed to. The brother ends up dating the other brother's sister. Or so, or, oh, I'm sorry, the other brother's. Uh, yeah. So what happens? Wife. The the plot of the movie is Toby Maguire goes to war, and uh, he's gone for so long that they think that Natalie Portman, which is his wife, thinks that he passed away. He's dead. Yeah. So she ends up getting real close to his brother. Of course, you know that seems like a natural thing that would happen. And they end up getting married, or they end up they're just fucking or whatever. But then Toby Maguire ends up being alive and coming back. Yes, with like terrible PTSD, and yes. obviously he's like, "What the fuck? You've been fucking yeah. my brother." So it was a great. It's a great acting performance from Toby Maguire for sure. But yeah, I've only seen it once, and uh, yeah, I need to go back and watch that. Right, one. there's one that uh, Noah keeps recommending to me with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's Nocturnal Animals. I've never heard of that. It's on. I think it's on Netflix right Is now. Is it came out recent? Yeah. Okay, I did see. I have no clue what it's about. Something so. with yeah. But he has been recommending it. Yeah. And I'm a fan of Jake Gyllenhaal. You know me. Yeah, he's good. He's a good yeah. actor. Uh, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, for sure. Um, I got a movie recommendation though. Do you? Yeah. So we, you know, we always do the. This is for the audience. We always do the album recommendations, like the the music and stuff. But I feel like we're getting to the point where we're gonna start recommending stuff that most people have already heard of or listened to. And maybe not, that's not the case, you know. I mean, there's endless amounts yeah, of endless. albums that we can recommend, but, right, but we kind of want to bring in we that. We want to shift to movies. Yeah. So uh, my first movie that I'm going to recommend, it's kind of a dark horse movie that people like don't really hear about, but it's phenomenal slapstick comedy. Okay. And it's uh, Clifford. <laughs> and it's not The Big Red Dog. <laughs> yeah. But it's like 1987, I want to say. Yeah. Maybe earlier than that. We went back and watched that uh, like a month ago. So funny, dude. Yeah. Martin it's just Short. like. Yes, Martin Short is so funny. So Clifford is my movie recommendation for this week. Um, yeah, it's I think it's, I want to say it's 1987, 1982 maybe. 
It could be earlier than that, but it's hilarious slapstick, like a staple for that kind of comedy. Yeah. But uh, what kind of movie recommendations did you make? I know I kind of popped this up. Yeah, this is kind of on the spot. spot for me. I mean, we did talk about it, so yeah. I should have kind of had something ready. But uh, I think I'm going to go with the movie uh, Green Book. Okay. It was, uh, I recommended it. I know it's you haven't seen pianist, it. Right? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the pianist to uh, a black pianist who's traveling in, you know, times of slavery. Oh, so okay. the Green Book is, is referencing to back in the day, they had a book of like, and when you're in certain towns, these are the like black friendly bars, I believe, or like okay. the places that yeah. you travel. That's not like segregated. Yes, yeah. Okay, yes. So, and he has a bodyguard and a guy who travels, a, a white guy who, you know, takes him across on his tour. Yeah. And it's a, uh, it's a pretty, really good movie. I think it won best picture in 2007. Okay, cool. 18, okay, maybe? cool. Yeah. So it, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was pretty good. Heck yeah. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. And it's played by, um, uh, something Muhammad who is who is really I think is his name really really Bilal good Muhammad played in yeah played in uh, like Moonlight and he's a really good up and coming actor oh I know you're talking about yeah. I haven't seen Moonlight either I've heard yeah. that's a very phenomenal film yeah I've seen a bits and pieces of it but right. I haven't seen it all okay cool uh, is there any movies coming out that you're excited for I don't even know really what's coming out what about you uh, there's supposed to be another Martin Scorsese film coming out um, I saw The Wallflower Oh yeah, I did yeah, see I that. Think of, I can't yeah, think of the name of it for some I reason. can't. Yeah, I remember it. That's supposed to be coming out soon. I'm actually excited for the uh, <laughs> the Barbie movie. There's a Barbie movie coming out. Yeah, and it's supposed to be like it's Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie. Wow, and Ryan course. Gosling's playing Ken. Of course, it's a perfect fucking. Fit. Now is this just supposed to like? But it's supposed to be like a stupid rom com. But oh, like, man. I don't think it's gonna be hilarious. Yeah. I think it's gonna be a good one. What do you think about Ryan Gosling? I'm okay with it. Have you seen the movie Drive? No, I mean, it seems to be a good movie, but it also seems like people blow it out of proportion. Yes, absolutely. It's not as good as everyone says. Yeah. But it's still a good movie. Like I think the I, score is really good, like the music in it. Yes, it's got very good music in it. And yeah. Ryan Gosling plays a good part, but it really, it takes a fucking dark turn randomly. Really? You have no expectation of the gore that's coming your way. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, I need to check that out. Then. It's like, it's worth a watch for sure. Okay. And it's one of Jeremiah's favorite movies because he's a huge Ryan Gosling guy. But I love to just shit on that movie. Oh, really? Yeah, just because of him. Just uh, only to him. So <laughs> shout, out, shout out Jeremiah. It's always fun to shit on your friends. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm such an <laughs> asshole. But. Speaking of, uh, shout out to the nut swinger yesterday. He uh, he was uh, having a few drinks for the for the Georgia game. Big Georgia fan, and uh, we're big Carolina fans. And uh, he we got blown out forty eight to seven. And he's talking that shit. Oh man, <laughs> so much shit. The hatred. I got pictures of middle fingers. I got pictures <laughs> of. I got pictures of butt naked on the damn toilet <laughs> with a damn. He was slinging them nuts with a damn uh, little Dr Pepper can covering his little little dinghy. Oh man! <laughs> shout out the shout out to his wife for taking those. Yeah. It had to be it had to be. That's fucking awesome. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, I was like, I don't know. He gave me so much hell, and I was like, I don't know when Georgia will lose. It might not oh. be this year, but when they do, you will be hearing. You'll from get a me. call from me. You will be hearing yeah, from me for sure. So that's fucking awesome. Shout out to the nut swinger. That'll man. be a good day for me coming up. Yeah, <laughs> he said. You know, I don't. I don't get much joy from a lot of things in life, but Georgia football is one of those things. <laughs> they're they're like, you know what? Really I was like, good, good for right you, now. man. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to beat that team. Yeah, they're, I'm surprised we scored a touchdown. I did not expect us to score on that last drive. I had a buddy who put uh two hundred fifty dollars down on. My buddy Griffin, shout out Griffin. Yeah. He put uh, $250 down on Carolina scoring over 13 and a half, which se- to me it was actually a good seemed line. like a good, a good bet. bet yeah. Because I was like, okay, Rattler can get him down the field once for yeah, a touchdown. For sure. And then they'll score a touchdown in gar- garbage time, which yes, they did yes. score the touchdown in garbage time. For sure. But uh, yeah, he lost that. Yeah, Rattler looked bad. The whole it's team. Got, it's got – but Rattler the whole, looked really bad. Yeah, the whole team looked Except bad, Except for that one throw he had to Jaheim Bell. Oh, that was an NFL throw. That was insane. Yeah, it was nice. And it was an NFL catch, too. That's a yeah. tight end yeah. running that route um, against a DB. Uh, and he then he tried to double down and put 300 down on App State. Uh, minus 14 against Troy. Dude, and, that Hail Mary. Yeah, so he lost both of those. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, so that's okay. That's a, that's a life of a better. That's the life of a better. You win some, you lose some. Got, uh, I got work. Uh, we call him Root Beer. 
Yeah. He he he's a big Clemson fan. We always talking shit, of course. We always talking shit. I'm like, man, I'm I'm glad we, we don't play LA Tech every week, you know. Oh, our LA Tech put up twenty on fucking Clemson last night. It doesn't have it doesn't have me like concerned about Clemson. They're gonna be yeah, there. They in the are, end, they are, you know. They just gotta figure out the quarterback situation. Yeah. But he always talking shit and he was like, Yeah, let's let's put a bet on that Georgia Carolina game. I'm like, I mean, I'm not gonna bet it straight up, obviously. How many like, points you giving me, yeah. And he's like, Well the spread is twenty four, like, but I think that's bullshit. I was like, he's like, I'll give you fourteen. No, it doesn't work that way. I'm like, you crazy. Yeah, it doesn't I was like, work I'll take. Se- I would say, I said, I'll take seventeen. And he's like, Nah, I ain't gonna do that. Like, I would have right. taken that. I'm yeah. always gonna side with Vegas. I know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, exactly. That's you know? what I said. He's like, Yeah, but it ain't always that simple. And I was like, That's probably fair. And he does better. He is a better. So he's he's right about that. It's not always fifty fifty right there. Yeah. But we got blown the fuck out. Yeah. That Georgia team is a lot better than everyone thought. Oh yeah, they're. I mean, I mean, we knew that they're the number Oregon. one team in the, in the nation for a reason. We knew that when Oregon. But. It's pretty clear too that they're number yes. one. I don't see anybody beating them. Nah, I don't either. That's interesting, man. But uh, you know, you're just talking about work. I've been kind of thinking about this lately. You know how there's like a, especially like the men before our generation, like before our generation, kind of raised us, have always kind of looked down on people who are quitting their jobs. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm kind of in the boat of if you're like super unhappy somewhere right and you really hate it like you are miserable yeah get out yes you yes know, get out for sure now I- there is a difference between like you're making a really like really good money at a job and you know every job you're gonna it's gonna be nobody wants to be there right you know what i'm saying nobody wants to be you yeah, know nobody I, wants to be at work nobody wants, to, be wants at work. to sit at home watch fucking movies and eat popcorn and yeah or be on vacation somewhere or traveling yeah. or at a show or whatever. So like you can't, I'm not saying to go out there and be lazy or go out there and just quit your job. Right. I'm not saying that. But so there's like, something better for your life. But if you, if you, you know, if you have some money saved up and you can quit that job that you legitimately hate, I can't fault anybody for like quitting that for job. putting their mental health first. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, see, sure. I'm not, I'm not against that, but you definitely have to have a backup there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think that, like I said, I'm not, I wouldn't quit. If I was really unhappy at my job, I wouldn't quit. Right. Because, I mean. It would have to be, like, so bad. Yeah. Like, to the point where, like, you're unhealthy, like, losing weight, like, shit like that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Now, I'm exact same. And obviously I'm that exact comes with, like, a price with how much you make. True. You know what I'm True. saying? So, like, yeah, that's kind of something that's been on my mind lately. Because, you know, you see people quit and then people automatically at the job always judge them. Yeah, like, right. what the fuck is wrong with them? Why they would they such quit? such a good job. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da. And I'm like, maybe they just want to pursue different yeah, dreams exactly, or whatever. So sure. I'm not against it. Yeah, for sure. And you know, like I said, the, the men before us, they, yes, they are really, really look down on that. I want to go back to the football thing. Um, I want to talk about that Chargers and uh, Chiefs game. Okay. So the Chargers are in the red zone and Gerald Everett is real tired. Oh, yeah. And he runs that route and Justin Herbert throws a pick six, a 99-yard pick six. Mm-hmm. Can't do that. But the guy that ran it all the way back, was fucking working at Wendy's like a year ago. Oh, he was like three years ago. He was working at Wendy's. Yeah, that's incredible. That's some. Uh, Dude, could you imagine what it would be like to be in Arrowhead Stadium or any stadium that's packed out your home stadium and you make a pick six on the goal line and take it all the way back to basically win the game? I know that's amazing. And you're standing there and there's fucking fifty thousand Chiefs fans just screaming at you and hollering and they're so they've never been happier to see that. Imagine the like. I don't think I can handle that level of like. Dopamine. Oh my god. That's like that's a straight up drug. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. You can't describe that feeling. It's so insane. The best example of that, well, that's kind of like really one specific play. I mean, he had to work hard to to get a starting job right. in yes. the NFL. Yeah, for but, sure. But uh the, the the best example of that is Kurt Warner. I don't know if you know his story, but he was uh stocking third shift a grocery in the grocery store and then he was playing uh like X not XFL but like Canadian football, I believe. Okay, yeah. And he he ended up working his way on the practice team for like Green Bay. He brought him uh, he brought him a a Jimmy, you know, what do you call it? Uh one of those Jimmy Jimmy Johns. <laughs> a green Jimmy, uh, like a like a uh SUV. Yeah, the truck. Yeah, yeah the G- yeah. GMC. GMC, yeah. And uh sorry. <laughs> and uh, I was really wondering what the fuck. Yeah, was that. I can't think of it. Jimmy John's. <laughs> Jimmy John's. <I'm> hungry. <laughs> and uh, to match like the Green Bay color, because he was like, oh, I'm actually made the team. The practice. Okay. Like, the team. Okay. And he, yeah. And they cut him. Oh, you bitch. And then 
you know, he's still st- stocking and, and uh, as a third chef stocker at a grocery store and then finally gets his chance with the Rams. Uh, and is an all-time great. And is a Hall of Famer now. <laughs> so <laughs> insane. It's crazy, man. That's uh, one one thing I think about, like, with the dopamine is um, you remember when Clemson was playing against Ohio State? Yeah. And Ohio State, they were kicking all these field goals and they were winning, though. It's like, it was like 20 to, like, Trevor three. Lawrence. Yes, Trevor yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, a couple years ago. And then Ohio State just fucking smashes Trevor Lawrence in that one play, and he's, like, hurt, and he's out for a second. And you know all of us, we hate Clemson. So we're so happy that he's, like, getting smashed. Yeah, I was at a Max Speed Shop downtown. And then he comes out the next play. It was like a read option for the – took it to the and house. He, and he runs it for 60-yard touchdown. Yeah, took it to the house. And, like, you see the look in his eyes, like, it's glossed over because of the dopamine. Like, you can see that feeling yes. where you're in the fucking sugar bowl and everyone's just, like, roaring. Because, dude, he got popped. Yes. And he was – his arms were up like he had a concussion. He was like – And then he goes out and runs a 60-yard touchdown. And he's like – it's not just like – it was just, like, wide open. <laughs> oh, it was me, Chris, uh, Justin – Felder, yeah. and we were all at uh, Max P. Shop, and we were like, cat Shout out to going, Chris and Justin. You got, you got knocked the fuck out. And all the we were all fans going, are going we're mad. Like, we were doing that right there, and there's a whole table of Clemson fans mad as fuck. <laughs> and then he comes back and runs and takes it to the house, and the yard is quiet. And then they you just go, <gasps> like all at <laughs> like, at our table, like what's up? And we were just laughing, like, like fuck God. yes, sir. And good. then they ended up coming back and winning that game, and we were the only like people rooting against Clemson in that oh, bar, and we God. ate shit. That's the whole. That's what's so fun about talking shit, though. But it wasn't like a like a rude confrontational. Yeah, shit. exactly. It was, just like, it was a like fuck fun, you, like yeah. fuck you. Yeah. We won. Yeah, exactly. Fuck y'all, I love know? that shit. Dude. It was fun, man. But yeah. Imagine that feeling being, what was he, 19, 20 years old? Being 20 years old and you make a play like that. Yeah. And the whole stadium is just looking at all the lights shining on you and you're the fucking guy that did that. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. my God. I couldn't imagine I couldn't the feeling. That. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't fathom that level of. I couldn't imagine that like, feeling, man. And joy and yeah. like happiness. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's yeah, that's that's intense, man. So imagine being like the, at that peak of your life and then starting to fall off as an NFL player. Or a football player, or any kind of athlete, you know? Yeah. Falling off and, like, getting to that point where you're old and you can't do that shit. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the clip of Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson in the hospital, or, like, in the nursing home or whatever. Mm-hmm. But behind, it's after Muhammad Ali was, like, fucking he had the old. Parkinson's, he, yeah, yeah, he was, like, brain damaged. Like, he couldn't really yeah, – he didn't was understand what was really going on. Really sad. And you see Mike Tyson. He's doing the, uh, the Muhammad Ali shuffle. Oh, nice. And, like, Muhammad Ali has no idea what's going on, but it looks like that glimmer of, like, he's like, oh – I used to I do that. know that. Yeah, and it's so cool seeing that shit. It's the same thing, that, though. Dude. But it's so sad. Mike Tyson is a like national treasure. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. Just like Nick Cage. Nick Cage, baby, get caged. Oh god, <laughs> the national treasure. Uh, Jeremiah actually recommended a uh, director to me the other day. It's, uh, what the fuck is his name? He did a movie, something Cosmos, uh, Thanos Cosmos or some shit. But um, I don't think I know that. He did two movies. Uh, one of them was in like 2010 called uh, Beneath the Dark Rainbow, Beneath the Black Rainbow, something like that. Okay. And then he did another film with Nick Cage in, in like 2018. But it seems like a really like underrated director. And I'm kind of interested. Like I'm really excited to go do a deep dive on this guy. He's okay, got like nice. three movies. Really? Yeah. And it was like Beneath the Dark Rainbow, something like that. One day we're going to have somebody to help us look this shit up and tell us. But Yeah. Yeah, and so it's like it's really interesting because Jeremiah, he's a huge movie buff. Shout out again to Jeremiah. He's right, a huge right. movie buff, and so he everybody says that I like horror movies more than he does. So he's like made it a mission to watch so many horror movies to have more knowledge on horror movies than I do. Dude, I was thinking like, what's the last really good horror movie to come out? Mm. Because I like I know we've might we might have talked about it, but uh. There's like I don't really like a lot of modern horror. Movies. I mean, what are we going to refer to as horror? Are we talking about psychological thrillers too? Um, I mean, because like I'm gonna, I'm, the first thing that came to my mind was Hereditary. Okay, that counts. Okay, then I, another thing that came to my mind though is Lighthouse. I haven't seen Lighthouse, but it doesn't seem like that. That's more. It's more psychological thriller, but so yeah. is Hereditary too. Yeah, but, but that, is a, that is a little. That is a straight. There are jump scares in that movie. You know True. what I'm saying? So True. I get it. There's horror. jump scares in the in lighthouse. Are there? Yeah. Nice. I saw something about the other day about uh, Nosferatu. There's a new Nosferatu coming out. I don't know. I don't know if you yeah. know who Nosferatu is. Yeah. Like the first, the vampire, first vampire. Yeah, yeah I believe. Uh, it was going to be played by Willem Dafoe. 
Oh my god! That's gonna be. I think that's gonna be. And that's uh, gonna be I was talking to Heather. I think he's already played a similar role to that. He did. He did play a uh, Dracula. Yes. At one point. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what it was. So that's really exciting. I'm such a fan of William Dafoe. Oh, he's so good. Dude. Yeah. So underrated. I was, too. I was actually watching uh, Spider Man, the first one last night. The Green Goblin. So good. I'm, oh, I hear you're a science whiz. I'm something yeah. of a scientist myself. Yeah. Yeah. Just like classic, dude. Oh, uh, going back to Scarface, me watching Scarface the other day. I remember like the first time I watched it as a kid. I mean, it's not a movie you should be watching as a kid, but uh, <laughs> definitely, I was it probably is. thirteen or fourteen. But you watch as a kid, maybe even younger than that. Welcome uh, to the real world. <laughs> and uh, dude, I, I remember we used to have the uh, the double tape, like the VHS tape. Yeah, it was two. It was three hours long, so it was so long that it couldn't fit on one tape. It had to be two tapes. Oh, that's fucking sick. Like Titanic, and I was like, I, that, that memory just kind of like. Right reappeared after I watched that movie. I was like, oh my God, I forgot that we had that. Like the double tape Scarface. And uh, I remember watching it for the first time. And uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Scarface, yeah. came out in 1994. It's on you. That's on you. Uh, when he <laughs> when he dies at the end, I remember being really like, not sad, but I was just like kind of sad that like. 1994 has been almost 30 years ago. Think about that. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, 28 years ago. Shit. Fuck, man. It doesn't feel that way, does it? Uh, it ain't 2009 no more. Shit, I know. Uh, but I remember being like really sad. And then when I went back and watched it again, I'm like, Why am I sad? This guy's a terrible person. Why am I sad right now? Like, this, there's only one way you could end this movie. He has to die. He has to die. Cause and I, that's such, I love that. It's so, it's so beautiful. Like, death is so beautiful in movies. Yeah. It's just like in, uh, no, I don't, I'm not going to say anymore. I'll, I'll tell you off air. Okay. But, um, I was going to refer to a show, but, you know, I don't, I mean, at, at this point, you know, it's kind of like the Scarface thing. If you haven't seen it, what the fuck? But, you know, I don't even want to mention the name of the show because you're automatically going to assume. But, okay. Um, um, but yeah, death and stuff like that is so beautiful, man. Yeah. I think that's the one thing that kind of made, and I haven't seen all of uh, Game of Thrones, but that it was like yes, one of the bigger draws yes, of like for any sure. of these characters can die at any moment. Yeah. But and I like what, that. That's what makes it intense. Yeah. Because like if I watch Supernatural... These motherfuckers just die and they get brought back. Yeah. I mean, I don't you know, they're the main that. characters. They're not going anywhere. But, like, exactly. But then Game of Thrones, there isn't a main character. Yeah. They could die That's any what's second. That's really And cool. so you're scared for these characters because you get so attached to these characters. Yeah. That you're like, oh, man, they could die, though. And yeah. So that makes it, you're more invested. For sure. Because you're pulling for the character to live. I love yeah, that. Yeah. And, shit. like, and you start to, these characters start to grow on you. Yeah, so you're like, man, I don't want, I don't, I love the actor, I love the yeah. character, I don't want him to die. And you don't really pick the character that you fall in love with. The character kind of picks you. Yes, you know? yes. So that's like, you can't really help shit, who you like. You said what? That's some cliche shit, but accurate. Is it? I, I mean, you don't it, pick the character. The character picks you. Uh, that's a little dorky, but yeah. <laughs> but it's accurate. Though. It it's is spot though. on. Yeah, but yeah. Like, and then so whenever they're in those situations where they're in fucking battle and they get stabbed in the leg or something, you're like, oh fuck, he might die here. Yeah. Oh, you're like, oh, please don't die. I gotta watch the next episode to see if he dies. Yeah. Right. And very, and it hooks you in very typical mo- like films and movies and stuff the main actor you're just like oh, when he gets into trouble you're like oh he's gonna persevere he's and- clearly coming out of this because he's the main character right so like that's what kind of keeps me away from watching those like marvels and that's fair the modern star wars but i will say and-, and this is gonna be a spoiler alert but i haven't even seen the movie and i've been spoiled it so that's okay but like the one of the i guess the new marvel in game or whatever where iron man dies yeah and it's like okay they're kind of getting the hint yeah, you got to kill these motherfuckers. Right. Sometimes they got to sacrifice themselves. I had a really, I have a buddy who's a really big uh, Marvel fan. Yeah, the new Thor came out, and he was just like, "Dude, I can't like, I can't go to the movies and see this." <laughs> like, I was like, "Yeah, they've been bleeding this shit dry for years. Yeah. They're just gonna keep pumping them out." You know what? There's a new one every year. <clears throat> you know what? The good thing is, if he doesn't go, they're gonna go bankrupt. Yeah, <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> He's like, I mean, I'll watch it eventually, yeah, but for like. Sure. I just can't keep. I'm not. I can't spend that money to go see the th- same thing I just saw two times. Yeah, like, that's so accurate, man. That's so fucking accurate. It's like the. I mean, it's very similar to like the Fast and the Furious. Oh man, There's that's 10 another movie I just watched the other day. I watched Fast and the Furious one the other day. That was pretty good. The I mean, original, all the way up to like Tokyo Drift, is phenomenal. It's kind of the same thing with Saul too. Like the first, the first one was three. Really, the first three are good. I remember the second one was really good. But the first one's the best. Oh, one. Yeah, the first one. And, the, and he shuts the fucking door. Oh man, dude! If you haven't seen Saw One, go watch it. Yes, that shit that's was good. Classic shit. Yeah, that's a good thriller right there for sure. And they turn it into like this, uh, just fucking gore porn. Yeah, gore yeah. porn for sure. Because the second one, the one, the one thing that 
Oh, there's two things that really stick out from, to me in the second one was when she had to when she got pushed into the needles. Oh yeah, oh, that really fucked me up. And then yeah. when uh, there was like a key and she had to like somebody had to like take their hand up into this box, and it was like a it was like metal, like sharp metal, and it folded up when you put your hand up in there, and then your fucking hand stuck. Just gets carved up on the way down. Yeah, that that after that, I don't think I saw. I don't think I've seen any of them after the third one, I believe. Right. I, I don't think I watched. I maybe watched like one or two. And they but, all run together yeah, after that. They do. You know? Yeah, that's kind of what I was wanting to do for you with your bachelor party is... Uh, Put me in a room with Saw. I want to play a game. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> then fucking little Caden, Caden rolls out on a little... Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I fucking know this little swole-ass kid. <laughs> oh, man. Your dad said Caden's like a pit bull. I can see that. <laughs> He's like a little short, little fucking yeah. stocky. All muscle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see that for sure. For sure. That's hilarious, yeah. dude. Uh, I was thinking the <laughs> other day, Well, I, this is something that's kind of been bugging me lately, and I might have said something to you about it. Yeah. Uh, when I watch, like, TV commercials, like, when they try to be... I've been thinking about this, and I fucking found one that is not that way. I will say this. Uh, there's a couple out there that's not bad, but, t- like, standard televised TV commercials, when they try to do comedy... They try to be funny. It is so bad and so vanilla oh, that it bothers me. Have you seen the Sarah Silverman Hulu commercial? Maybe. <laughs> I feel like you – is it like – I guess it's on TV? Like I, I saw it on YouTube the other day. Okay. And I was like, this is a fucking real commercial? Really? Yeah, it might have, I don't know if it was on TV sh- or you YouTube. You have to show me that, yeah. But everybody, if you are agree with what he's saying, which I do agree with what he's saying, go watch the Sarah Silverman Hulu commercial. You will laugh your ass off. Um, Because she does not hold... It's literally... It's like you watch Sarah Silverman's comedy. It's that on the damn... (laughs) It's so like... It's a raunchy commercial. Nice, dude. Uh, Yeah. The... It's just so vanilla, man. It it bothers me. I'm like, this is not funny. Fuck friends. When can we... (laughs) (laughs) Fuck friends. Dude, when can we... uh, Let's just cut loose with it. Yeah, get a little loose. Yeah, let's just cut loose with that shit, man. Like, yeah. wouldn't it be a lot better if Joey Diaz came on the commercials and was like, you want to shave your fucking ball bag, you cocksuckers? Yeah. <laughs> like, it would be so much better. You want to get your fucking dick sucked in the morning, you need to <laughs> shave your ball bag with the lawnmower 4.0. <laughs> yes. I mean, I get it. You know, the Christians it's not are watching. PC. Oh, God. <laughs> fuck them. They're probably watching this. Yeah. So oh, sh- sure. Shout out to the Christians. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, you want to keep it like, you don't want to get too crazy, but right. it can be better than that shit. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's a lot of funny comics out there like Nate Bargatze and oh my god, dude. and Ga- uh, uh, and Fluffy. What's his yeah, name? Gabriel, uh, Iglesias. Gabriel Iglesias. And they're like yeah. clean comics. They could do hilarious stuff. Yes, yes. But like, then there's like the pizza commercial with uh, or the underwear commercial with um, damn it, dude from uh, The Office and Hot the Time Machine. Daryl Philbin. Oh, yeah. What's his real name? Uh, Craig, Rob- uh, Craig Robinson? Yes. Craig? So- yeah, Craig Robinson. Yeah, I think. I think that's right. But he does the uh, Wash Your Draws and all that. It's a stupid ass song. Oh, yeah. He's always doing those like singing commercials. Those that's are what he's good. good at. Those are good. That's like spot on. I do for like him. The, uh, the Mayhem, the All State Mayhem commercials. Oh, yeah, those are good. Those are pretty good. Those are good. Yeah, I like that. Have you seen the newest one where uh, he's driving through the fucking, he's like in like a like an off brand Dodge char- Charger? That's exactly what it's supposed to be. When he's driving through the parking lot and he's bumping into fucking cars. Oh, yeah. And he's he gets like, out and he puts a mask of himself yeah. on. It's yeah. like a big hit fat head of himself. He's the mascot. And yeah. He's late. Yeah, and it's him. And he's like going 60 through the parking yeah. lot. And the guy backs out and he clips the whole bumper <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah, and then he good. gets out and puts a fucking, he's the mascot of himself. Yeah. It's so good. That one's good. Yeah, they did. Dusty Slay was hilarious uh, last night, man. Nice, if you haven't, dude. if you haven't seen, uh, if you haven't listened to Dusty Slay, he's, he's, a, he's a really good comic. I've only seen a few clips of him. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to shift gears into uh so me and gabby had this conversation um thursday night friday night on the way home uh we actually went out and ate at iron hill brewery which i might end up editing this out because i don't want it to blow up you know because so many people are listening oh yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> you know not iron hill brewery you really like that, that place, place out yeah i got a ribeye again and it was fucking phenomenal we actually had this uh our server was this guy named zen zen and he had a dice earring on one side. Oh man, but what are you dice clay? Funny as shit, dude. <laughs> the funniest dude. Like I like this guy. Yeah, and so I forgot. Like he was always cracking jokes and you know stupid. Like he was like, oh, because I didn't have my King of the Hill membership card on me. 
So I, he just took my number down and went and, you know, put the, so I can get the points. Yeah. And so he's like, all right, what's your number? And I wrote it down. He's like, all right, when can I call you? You know, like little stupid jokes like that. Yeah. I was like, huh? <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, anyways, on the way back, we were kind of talking about how like I set like too high of a standard for myself sometimes. Okay. And like, it, like she was saying like, you're really hard on yourself sometimes. It's like, yeah, that's probably accurate. But like, how do you mean? And she was like, well, like, you know, like refer to like some of the things I do, like worry about. She's like, you're fucking 22. You're ahead of like so many people. You're doing so much more than everybody else at that age. But you think it's not enough because you put yourself at such a high standard. But can I stop you for a second? Uh, yeah. But maybe that's why you are ahead. Yes, exactly. That and that's process she said is, that, yes. yes. And that's exactly what she said. She's like, there's a reason why you're that far ahead is because you're a perfectionist to some extent. And obviously, I'm not like a perfectionist, but there's some things I do, I like know that I can do it better. Yeah. Like I'm doing it at this level and I'm like, man, I can do this better though. I can do this better. And I'm always achieving that. Like I'm always striving for that perfection, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent, dude. Uh, you know, I, I was kind of wanting to bring that up, bring some like kind of similar to this up. Uh, you know, life really is all about perspective. I, I might have talked about it a little bit before on yeah. some other podcasts, but like when you continue to look at everything in a negative aspect, right? Then everything is always going to be negative. That's true. You know, everything that happens to you, you're going to feel like the world's against you because you always look at everything that happens to you as negative. Yeah. So I want to challenge people to like really start to try to find the good and everything, even if it's bad, even if like, oh my God, I got to really fill this guy's shift today and work another four hours. You know what, man? It's money. Yeah. At least I'm in a good position. At least I'm making money. At least like I have a home to go to. You know what that kind of reminds me of? You know what I'm saying? It's like we talked about like the diet thing on here before. It's like some people want to just jump straight into doing keto and cut all the bad shit out all at once. You can't do that. You can't do that. Like uh, I've been talking to Turtle. He's like, I want to do this meal plan and all this stuff. I'm like, you know what you should do first? Drink one less soda a day. That's it. Drink, We've drink, talked about it If you it can before. do better than that, drink one soda a day. Yeah. You're drinking three now, drink one. Because, I mean, that's the and problem. That's, but that's what I want to go with, like, the happiness thing. It's like, you're negative all the time. Just find, try to find one thing every day to be happy about. And try to work on changing your yes. perspective, man. Yes. Like, ask yourself, am I getting better every day as me, as myself, as right. a human being? Am I progressing mentally? I mean, physically is kind of, kind of you can kind of, like, if you're working on your physical, like, if you're working out and you're trying to lose weight, yes, that does help you mentally. Right. But I'm speak. I'm really speaking on like your mental health here. When I say, are you improving every day? Right. You know, or I mean, maybe I mean you. Everyone listening might be like, yes. Well, then ask yourself, how am I improving? Are you just lying? To, are you lying yeah, to yourself sure. right now just to just to yes. say like just so you don't have to face the fact that you're not improving every right. day? Right. Because there's certain things where like, for me, I, when I first started. You know, when I hit 2021, 20, I was really bad at talking to people and holding conversations. Like, I've never been, like, like terrible at it, but I always kind of, like, fake. I was faking it. Okay. And I always kind of felt weird in conversations. Yeah. You know, I always kind of had, like, a little bit of anxiety when I talked to even, like, close, like, like you know, fairly close friends, you yeah. know, yeah, to yeah. where I was, like, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, like, I don't know, it just felt kind of weird. It never felt, like, genuine, genuine and okay. natural. So, like... But I have really worked on you that have, yeah. in the past like five to six to seven years. And now I'll go in the barbershop and talk to everybody in there. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And um, if I could give advice to anybody that like feels like their life is kind of down or, you know, it's, I mean, life's hard for all of us for sure. Mm -hmm. But and I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard this before, but if I can give any advice to people is to find that one thing positive in your life. Look for those little wins. Yeah. The little like, wins. Yeah, that's it. That like really just, I woke it. up and I, bro I brushed my teeth today. Yeah, I, mean, I can get up and walk, but I'm just saying, like, yeah, just yeah, some yeah. little things, yeah. you know. Like, I broke, I woke up and I have the ability to use my arms and legs. Yes, how awesome is that? Because some yes. people don't have that luxury. Anytime you're faced with something that you see this negative, or where you're like, like I said, it could be worse. It could be so much worse. And so think about like, yeah, all my job sucks, but I live a good life where I can feed my family and come home and watch the game and have home. a beer or whatever yes. you know and it might be stressful sometimes but that's everything everything's gonna be stressful you're gonna stress about everything sometimes yeah yeah and but one thing me and gabby kind of got into with this conversation is like young people hold themselves to a high standard and i feel like that's why anxiety in young people is so prompt so much more prominent now than it was in the past because young people have more access like they're tr they're striving to be they're growing up so fast and they're striving to be like adults but they're not they're not you don't have an adult mind yet 
That's fair, but I'm going to also say that I think the reason why a lot of people have more anxiety now is because of uh, the internet and social media. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. We're in a newer state where you have so much more access to everything. And so... Like a young, like a young person, I was trying to. I'm, I grew up very fast. I will 100 percent agree mm-hmm. that I grew up fast. You did. And so whenever I'm 18 years old and I'm in this more grown up situation, I'm not a grown up, right? And so like I look at like, oh, these grown ups, they don't. Have, there's no way they have this anxiety. Maybe I just have like an anxiety problem. But no, they definitely had that anxiety they, they, at that yeah, age for sure. But they just grew up and they had more experiences. Yeah. So like, and they definitely had that anxiety, even if they had that experience when they were 30 or 40. Yes. Yes. That first experience, you know. So. And what I want to refer to is uh, whenever I wrestled in high school, uh, we always had like super – if anybody's wrestled or done any kind of like – I mean, any sport in school, yeah. you know it's fucking tough sometimes. Like oh, yeah. Else. And uh, one thing that Coach Abby always told me was uh, – or told everybody was that it was like at the end of a tough fucking workout, we're doing planks, and it's like five minutes into a plank, and everybody's dying. And he's like, you know what's funny? One day y'all going to look back on this shit, and y'all going to be in a tough situation in life, and you're going to be like, yeah, but I survived that shit. Right, right. And so it's like, it's just like that. Like, the older you get, you have more of those experiences to look back on and be like, okay, I did that. I can relate it to this. And that's how I can overcome this anxiety now. Yeah. See, I think with like, kind of de- going back to what I said about the whole social media and uh, anxiety thing, I think that uh, it's only going to get worse because I agree. So many people are like, the, the, like, the world has kind of made us stay at home. You know, True. we got yeah. Uber, we have. We're not Amazon Uber, but, Prime uh, and yeah, all that shit. We every, we can food never leave. Yeah. yeah, so like, and it really what that does is that it takes away our social skills. True, going out to the damn store and communicating with people and asking, "Hey, can I get this and this?" Yeah, going out like back in the day in the eighties, and I'm trying to be like boomer man here, but. I think it is better to like find someone that you can fall in love with nowadays, and it is a lot easier nowadays than it was in the '90s and '80s. Yeah, absolutely. Because you didn't have an app where you can be like, "Hey, do you want to go have some beers and go oh, out to a movie?" Yeah, what or do you something? like? Yeah, what do you not like? So, but there is something to it to where you're not like. I've been on some some dates where it was like super awkward. Yeah, and. I think, and I can see that in a lot of the younger guys and, and, you know, the younger people coming up to where it's like, they're suffering when it comes to their social skills. Yeah, absolutely. And they're scared to talk to people or interact with people. And it's because they're always stuck at home, you know, and confined into their little, their, their bubble and their space. You've yeah. got to get out of that. You know, it, yeah. the internet yeah. does bring a lot of good things, but what yeah, it is doing convenient. is, is creating a lot of social anxiety for a lot of people these days. But like, and I know you've seen the meme of like, or it's not really a meme, I guess it's just like a inspirational post, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's like, you know, good times create weak people and then weak people create hard times, hard times, create strong people, strong people create good times. Right. Right. And so this is the exact same concept of like all this accessibility we have now turns into convenience. Yeah. And all this convenience is going to turn people weak because they're so used to all this convenience. What happens whenever that convenience isn't there anymore, you know? Yeah. Which, obviously, that seems like a you know one of those conspiracy theory, like, far-fetched ideas that we might lose that convenience at some point, but... I don't think, I mean, that's not that crazy to but think But, yeah, of. you know, like... I mean, North Korea exists. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Who's to say that that can't be us? Yeah, that's true. You know, I right. don't think that it yeah. will or won't. I don't want really to get into that, but... Uh, me neither, but, but... that's, like, that's the same thing of, like, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Right. If you say comfortable your whole life... Are you really going to, like, enjoy life? Right. I see what you're saying because, like, there's a lot of things that if you do branch out and you can get more comfortable, you can enjoy even more things. Yes, there's a lot to, exactly. There's a lot of things out there to, you know, be enjoyed and that's, or whatever. And, I, and I, it's easy for me to say because I'm a Libra. Oh, God. All the balance. <laughs> <laughs> the balance of my life is just... Are you really a Libra? I am. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. I only know mine. I just yeah, yeah exactly. I think yeah. that's yeah. That's I feel like that's the yeah. standard person. Yep, that's accurate. Yeah, I, I know, can't. Were you a Cancer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Negative yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I I really think like it all boils down to and the internet access of like like you're saying it's going to get worse is because we see these people on the internet that are doing so good or whatever and we hold that standard for ourselves. But sometimes you can't beat other people's standards. You can't make other people's standards your standard. There was a statistic that came out not too long. Well, I say, I don't know how long it's been, but maybe a year or two ago. Uh, 
it said that I think it was like 80 or 90% of uh, people who are all constantly, I don't know how they got this number. You have to look it up. Who are like couples who are constantly posting their photos on Facebook always end up breaking up. Huh. Now it could be like one of those for other people's validation. Yes. Uh, yeah. You want them to be like, Oh, this is a good match. Yeah. And then eventually that kind of just gets stale. To that stale. makes me happy because me and Gabby never post shit. Oh, you can see <laughs> yeah. me and Heather. We never yeah, right. post anything. Yeah. You know, that's kind of, she uh, don't even do uh, social media. So yeah, that's true. It's so, so much healthier. Oh, dude, I'm so thankful. She yes, don't do social media. So it's healthier. like one of the greatest things. Yeah. That's really nice. I'm yeah. sure. But it's also nice to be able to tag people in funny memes and, Videos and oh, yeah, cats. True. <laughs> sure. I'll show her like a really well known meme. She doesn't even have a clue yeah, what that's it is. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. That's pretty, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, you, you just got to f- get out there, push against that gotta anxiety, man. Push against the grain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to get hard. <laughs> I fuck hard. <laughs> uh, Fucking crystal, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of sad where I, I feel like a lot of these younger guys, in their twenties or stuff, or you know, men and women. I don't yeah. want to say guys. Yeah, I mean everybody. Yeah, I don't right. mean you know you men, guys. But, hey, you guys. Yeah, hey, you guys. That was but, women uh, there. Yeah, uh, you got to look like him. That's what I've heard. <laughs> You're not the first one to say that. I know. That's uh, what I'm <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of sad to see. It is, but but also you got to think you were there at some point. At some point you were there with the anxiety, and so like looking back on it, would you change anything? Would you do you wish that you were a less anxious person at some point in the past? Uh, I mean, yeah, I had a lot of anxiety, and I mean, I still have my own anxieties with certain things. But also, but like, if I, you weren't an anxious person in the past, you dealt with that already, and you have a very good way of dealing with it now. So, like, what if that hit? You? Would you rather that happen? Like, say you had it happen in your twenties versus happening in your forties? Yeah. You'd much rather happen in your twenties, and you just learn it. And the then, earlier you work on it, the better. Yes. For sure. Otherwise, you're just going to suffer through it your whole life. Yes, exactly. So, like, work on getting better at it just a little bit of, at a time. So, that's that's my challenge. I got a challenge for everybody that struggles with anxiety. Try to just overcome, just like the just like the advice of, you know, try to find one positive thing in your life a day. Try to do one thing, like, try to become comfortable with the unknown. Yes. And that's what... uh One thing that you don't like, if you don't want to do it, but like you know you need to do it, just get it over with. Don't procrastinate. Don't push it off because it's going to cause more anxiety by pushing stuff off. It is. It's 100%. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just rub my sweaty feet on top of his. Yeah. Might cut me up with them damn toenails. No, no these more are clear. Yeah, they are. I felt them. They're pretty smooth. <laughs> like a damn stone come out the river. <laughs> yeah, and I think like everything we really touched on was, you know, you know, pers- life, like perspective of life is – that kind of helps. Yes. Just, yes. Just improving a little bit each day. Yeah. A little bit each day. Be Try the best. Try your best to find the positive in your life every day. I know sometimes it's hard. Oh, it's fucking hard a lot of times. But anytime you're fate or you get pissed off, road rage, whatever, just try to like calm yourself. Find that positive in At your day. At the end of the day, it's me versus me. That's all it is. That's, Life is 100% yeah. perspective. Yeah, for sure. Like I can find a good perspective in just about anything yeah in my day. absolutely you know absolutely. what i'm saying just about and, anything and that's why we're always joking around and goofing off and saying stupid shit yeah but it also makes me like i do worry about some people because like you say like robin williams or like chris farley that's i'm glad you brought that up Keep because on. like there's so many people that do have that they look like they have that perspective on the outside but then deep down they're fucking depressed and like they hate their life yes that's what comes with that's the negative aspect of that when you right. start to try to find all the positive and you start to – I'm not saying that you need to cater and walk on eggshells around people and – you know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't sit there and, like, give up your mental health for other people. Right. I'm not asking people to do that. There are times where, like, you know, a friend asks you to do something. You don't want to do it and you, you do it just because you, you want to make please them. You want to make them happy. Yeah, I actually had a uh, – I've kind of struggled with that a little bit where I was, like, just trying to make everybody happy. And that was really, like, a year or two ago. And then I had a dream. I still do that. Yeah, I do it. I do it. Day. I still do it, but not as bad as I used to yeah. because I had – this because of this dream. I had a dream. I don't know who I was talking to, but uh, somebody, like, asked me something. Like, How do you feel about this? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And they're like, yeah, I knew you were going to agree. You always agree. And, like, that dream, like, stuck with me. Hmm. And it's like, yeah, you Brian always agrees. He just he just goes with the flow. 
And, but in my head, I was like, I don't really want to do that. Why did I agree? Like I've, that dream was like really stuck with me, like for like a year or two. That's interesting. Yeah. But it's like, that's something that I've struggled with is like, sometimes I just don't speak up and be like, that's fucking stupid. I don't want to do that. Yes. And sometimes it seems negative, but I guess it's really more like you got to be like positive, but you also got to be realistic. Yes. Yes. But it's hard to find that balance. There's a fine line. There's there a fine is. line in like, and I'm not saying I know that line at all. I'm just saying I'm not, I'm, like, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to find it, it yes. like the rest of us, you know, and I'm trying to help people find it with me. Yes. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? So it's, uh, it's interesting, man. I, I was, I was telling Heather last night when we was coming back from the comedy zone, I was like, it's weird because I know this sounds like I know this sounds weird, but or it sounds like I'm kind of being an asshole or whatever you want to call are. it. I'm, yeah, I already know that, but <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I kind of feel like sometimes I feel like I'm starting to gain too many friends, huh? You know, because like I love them all, yeah, and I it, I can feel myself starting to. Uh, have a little bit of anxiety because I can't hang Being out overwhelmed with, overwhelmed with like, I can't hang out with all of them. Yeah. And I can't give them the time they need. And I want to give them, I don't right. have that time. Yeah. You know, cause and that's also you holding yourself to that high standard, man. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. You know, 10 years ago, I didn't, I mean, I had friends, but it wasn't like I do now. Yeah. Or then again, you have a higher standard of how you treat your friends now than you yes. did then. So maybe you had the same amount then, but you didn't like, want to treat them like you didn't understand how treating a friend how far it goes then like right you know. right and i think that just me improving as a person every day and working on myself every day has made yes. it made people like me more like i've become fair, a yeah. more likable person like that, it seems yeah. like you know and uh yeah because there's, there's times where like i haven't seen friends that i love like family in a month and a half or whatever yeah, however right. long and it's like damn like you know, I'm booked up all the time yeah. and I can't, and I really want to make time for these people. And I wish I had all the time. Like I wish I, I could just hang out with these people and really have these good times. And it kind of sucks to not be able to see these people. Yeah. But it's also, and I, you know, you see this shit all over social media. Uh, yeah. You can make time for them, but they also got to make time for you. Yeah. That's and so true. it's like, if you're, yeah, you, know, you can feel bad about not reaching out to some people, but are they reaching out to you either? Yeah. I, and I got something I kind of want to, come back to here in a second uh okay with that uh i'll try to remind you yeah it's and i think that i've gotten to the point to where it's become it hasn't become like extremely overwhelming yet yeah but it's i can kind of see the snowballs starting to pick up right. of uh i'm not i don't reach out to them as much because i don't know why like they are, it seems like they're reaching out to me, and I just want to say to those people who are always reaching out to me that I don't reach. Uh, like they always contact me first versus me contacting them. You know, I love you. It's yeah. it's hard, you know, sometimes to like. I don't know. It's, yeah, I, there's, sure. I got a lot going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's hard to uh, stay committed. It's a lot of energy, man. Yes. So I'm trying. Yeah. You know? I'm I'm kind of excited because I you know I'm going to Italy in two weeks, so I'll be gone for ten days, and. I'm excited for it to be ever with. Yeah. It's, it's going to be so fun. It's a big build up and it'll be fun. Oh my God, dude. It's been a lot. Dude. You'll have a big, like a big hoorah weight <laughs> off your shoulders. Once you get know, there man. and get and to the hotel and it's like, okay, we're here. We're fine. Yeah. That's, that's half. Like I've right never there. been out of the country. I'm going by myself with a 15 year old kid. Yeah. You and know, it's, it's, it's exciting being a young coach with young students and cause I'm growing with them, you know? Yeah. Like the, uh, like I, I told you the other day, I was trying to learn how to throw a spinning kick. I'm trying to learn how to teach. I'm really trying to learn how to teach that jump spinning back kick, you know? And yeah. I'm just like, I'm trying to throw it myself and I'm trying to find different ways. And there's, it's like the most simple thing that helped me learn how to teach it. Yeah. And it was like, it's something that I teach whenever throwing regular kicks. And I just like forgot about it in the spinning kick. Cause I'm doing all these other, there's so many moving parts. You forget the basics. Yeah. But that's just like life in general. You know, you're going to forget if you can forget the simple shit, then how can you do the complex shit? Yeah. hundred percent. And I, I'm not sure. I wasn't trying to sound like some kind of asshole of like, Oh, I have too many friends. I can't hang out with all of them. You know, I'm just being honest. I didn't look at it that way at all. Okay. Yeah. I really saw it. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I don't have that many friends like that I'm close with. Yeah. But, um, uh, I don't get to hang out with the friends I'm close to now and I have not that many friends. So I get it. 
Yeah, and it's that's fucking hard. We were on we were driving back from the comedy zone last night, and uh, I was talking to Heather about this. I was like, uh, I was like, there's people that like, there's a lot of friends that I have that, uh, like, uh, I don't want to today, this. Junior. <laughs> <laughs> to the, to, to today, Junior. Today, yeah, Junior. Yes, so I have a lot of friends that. You know, like I said, I want to spend more time with. There's a lot of people that, like, I don't even give the en- – and this sounds very shitty. Say it. I don't give them the energy. Like, that don't, they don't see the full me, like people at work or people, like, acquaintances or whatever, because I know that if I do give them that full energy, that's going to be a another friend. Yeah. And that's going to snowball that overwhelming Feeling. thing of me, you know, going – and this is something that just came up recently. Okay. Of like, you know, it's, it's just going to bring on more of what I don't want. So I already have so many friends I want to see, and I just don't have the time to see them. One thing that I've been doing, and I, and I like to say that I have a pretty good memory. Uh-huh. And so one thing I've been doing lately to help with those overwhelming feelings and anxiety of like, oh my God, I'm so, my schedule's so packed. I'm just writing shit down. It's the most simple thing. Yeah. But I'm writing everything down that I do. Whenever I do something, I think I have a, I think any thought that's like, oh, I need to do this, I write it down immediately. Really, dude, it helps so much. Okay, oh and you have like God. a like a checklist. I have a, I have a fucking checklist. Rogan actually talked about that on his podcast. Dude, yeah, and I've kind of like listened to that a little bit, and that's kind of what inspired me to do it. But I was like, really starting to feel overwhelmed because I'm doing so much shit. I'm working. I'm I teach. You know, I do shirts. Uh, shout out Victory Apparel if you guys need shirts. Nice. I do make those. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do shirts. We're doing the podcast. I still have to manage a social life and a life with, you know, uh, my relationship too. So it's like yes. so much shit going on all at once. You got an, a job that does 40 to 60 hours a week. Yeah. You got family. Yeah. You got this podcast. You got jujitsu. You yeah. got, um, and not to mention, yeah, exactly. I'm Coach trying to Karate. train too. Yeah. So you it's got like, the shirts. it's nonstop yeah. going dude. But like, and it's so easy to forget little things. So if I don't write shit down, dude, I'm going to forget. And then you also need those days where I don't do shit. <laughs> the mental health days. That was yesterday. I'm just like, you know what, man? I'm going to sit down. I'm not going to worry about all that shit it's got go- yes. I got going on. I'm just going to watch the Red Zone for seven and it hours. Didn't ha- and it didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen yesterday at all. I got like an email about the fucking kickboxing tournament for Italy, and then that distracted me. And That's the way it goes. But the good thing is I did get to cut my dog's pin yesterday. Nice. So I got like one little win. Yeah. One small little win. Yeah. I ended up having to go to work. But I was at the gym yesterday from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. I was at the gym for four hours yesterday. Yeah, Had three nice. private lessons. Nice. So that's fucking sick. Hell yeah. Yeah, but it's it's impossible, dude. If I don't write shit down, it's stressful. But so I I literally like from in the morning to twelve o'clock at night when I go to bed, I have a full schedule every yeah. day. And if I don't have my days planned out like that, and sometimes like I'll get shit done sooner than twelve p.m. so I can fuck off at night. Yeah. And I'll play a video game or I'll play Fortnite for ten minutes. You know. Oh no! <laughs> Why? That's fucking funny, dude. It's so it's so cringe that it's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> so cringe. <laughs> it's so, so funny, cr- dude. How about that video I tagged you in of the uh, Texas A and M guy on the sideline? Oh my god, that's way more cringe. That than was Fortnite. the one of the hardest things I've watched. How about that time. video I tagged you in of the guy cutting his grass? That cutting the, the long hair. The first thing I thought satisfying as. Fuck. Yeah, so he tagged me in a uh, a video of a guy like the 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 yard was so overgrown. It was overgrown into the sidewalk. It was bad. Oh, you couldn't see shit. And then he the guy who had came in to like cut all of it and like landscape it was he videoed all of it and uh And it's all sped up too, so it's super, super fast. Yeah, yeah. super and, ASMR, like <laughs> dude, uh only thing I think it was that motherfucker had to be so tired. Oh yeah. Cause like that yard, like the work that needed to be done, was overwhelming, and I just know how tired I am after I like do my yard. Or like, but you got to think you doing your yard is also on top of your job. If that's just your job, okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, you're doing that on top of your job. Yeah, that's fair. Versus doing it as your job. Yeah, and you're probably getting paid fucking good because that was really good work. With, like the line work on the damn yeah. sidewalk and the curb and all that it was perfect line work. The the most satisfying part was when he would like cut it and then shovel it oh yeah the <laughs> i loved yeah <laughs> yeah and it's just fucking peeling it back and making oh, it you can see more spot. of the sidewalk yeah and then whenever really he did nice. the leaf blower at the end did you see that part oh yeah that was really he pulls nice. all the grass off that's cool uh what i was gonna go go back to when we were on that topic was uh yeah like the the friends and being overwhelmed yeah what uh we talked about like uh like friends and family and stuff one thing i really wanted to talk about was 
the generation, I mean, I guess not even the generation before us, but I think this is like what everyone thinks. This is what, this is probably, I'm pushing back on like probably what 80 or 90% of people believe. Right. Probably 90, 95 of like, I don't care about personally. And maybe this is because our, we don't know our cousins. We've, we don't know, you know, it's just our immediate family. Yeah. But to me, blood doesn't mean much to me. I agree with that. Because, I mean, it, it means, like, with me and you, it that's means different. a lot. Yeah, that's different. You know, but we are also, we also have a great connection. Yes, exactly. And, like, with mom and dad, I, you know, it means a lot. But yeah. just because we had we, we had the same blood running through our veins doesn't mean that gives you the right to be a fucking asshole to me. Yes, exactly. And that doesn't mean I have to excuse that because yeah, you're with family. the same blood yeah. or we're family. So I just want to let people know that it is okay to cut a family member off because right. they're a fucking asshole. You keep doing this thing with your lip, like you're really pissed off as you're saying this, and I really? appreciate it. And you're going like, and I do want to let you know that it's okay. To, um, you're like a fucking dog, well, like, <laughs> like you're ready to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so oh, like I appreciate it. I have friends that are like family to me yeah so and they treat they treat me better than i hear some of these people treat their own family i also have friends that are like family to me that have family members are you on your third yeah okay i, was, I didn't know if it was mine or not that uh that their family members treat them like shit but they want to still like try to cater to their family that's what i'm saying yeah like but you don't have to do that no and that seems shitty and it's family they're gonna oh my god we're family you're really gonna do me like that that's what those toxic motherfuckers will do. That's exactly They'll right. pull the family card. And I'm just letting you know, it's okay to cut them motherfuckers off. Just like if, you're, if your mental health is suffering with the job, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. If they're treating you like shit, then fuck that, dude. That's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's ah, shitty. I agree. Yeah. And just because you had the same blood running through your veins doesn't mean a fucking thing. Yeah, that's right. You know, I have, like I said, I have friends that are closer to me than other family members. Absolutely, yeah. So it's like... Don't sacrifice your your mental health because they want to pull the, or even, they might not even be pulling that. You just are a, a good person. Yeah, and you and have that you, in the back of your mind. Like, like oh man, that's the only family I'll have. So whenever they pass away, I'm gonna look back and be like, man, I didn't spend enough time with them. Right. But that person could be a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So like me and yeah, like yeah. me to you, I'm just like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I see nothing wrong with cutting a family member off i really like it and it's it sounds shitty but it's not yeah. i mean it's and i'm not on. talking about like you know a person who isn't a shitty person you had a disagreement don't just like cut them off don't be yeah. an asshole i'm just talking about like you know someone who is like constantly asking you for money or taking advantage of you yes and then they keep running back with the same sob story because they know they can take advantage of you and then because you start, you're a family member. And then you're like denying them. They're like, oh, you're going to be, oh, you're better than me now. Right. So it's that's like, like, that's like a, it's like, they want to, that's exactly like you said, the toxic people are going to do toxic shit. Always. And I hate using that word because it's so like fucking trendy, like I don't, yeah, I don't toxic, care. you know, it's oh, a good word toxic, to use, but it's accurate. It really describes what you're talking about, you know? Yeah. But like the people that'll do that toxic shit, whether they're, they're trying to make you feel bad, they're trying to gaslight you. Yeah. They're trying to make you feel bad about doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So it I, benefit them. I don't see anything wrong with cutting like a family member off. Yeah, even if it's like your old mom or dad. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, we have great relationships with our family. Yeah, we're with lucky. our mom. We're very lucky. We're very lucky. You know, we have a great mom, great dad who's always been there for us. Always, you know, done the best they could for us for sure. And uh, they made that shit work. They fucking did. <laughs> and, we'll talk about it more when we have them on here. Yeah, and. uh I just listen to other people talk about their mom and dad and, and, you know, brothers and sisters and cousins and stuff. And I'm like, you know, you don't have to put up with that shit. Yeah. I get it. It's your mom. And I know it's easier said than done. For sure. Because it's, at the end of the day, that's your mom or dad. Yeah. And you love those. And and you want to, you and love a those. part of you wants that person to be what everyone else yes. experiences in yes. that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. So. You kind of want them to... Uh, like you see your friend that has like a good relationship with their mom and dad. And you want that. You want it to be that, but sometimes... That's a unique relationship. Sometimes it's just not that. Yeah. 
Sometimes it's just not that. Yeah, for you sure. got dealt a shitty hand. You have a shitty mom or dad or a shitty brother, sister, whatever it is. Sometimes it's just not that, and it's never going to be that. Yeah, exactly. So don't let – all it boils down to to me is one human being being shitty to another human being. And also at and the end of the day – it shouldn't be like that. At the end of the day, I feel like life is very balanced in that situation where like, yeah, you might have you know a shitty mom or dad or brother or whatever, but then your other relationships are probably going to be better. Like you're going to have a relationship that re- kind of replaces that, like the positivity, you know, like the level of like you have like a negative relationship with one person, you're going to have a positive relationship with another person. That's kind of all on you to like, are you going to take that path of, you know, you had a bad childhood or whatever? Are you going to go keep going that negative path and dig that hole deeper? Are you going to... I feel like most people would. They do. But exactly. But are you yeah. going to... You could always like look for those positive relationships because there's always opportunity for a positive relationship. Yeah. It's all about attitude. It is. It is. And that's easy for me to say. It is. And, and one thing that... Try to, you know, I don't, I don't know if I do this or not. But I think that we all kind of had this in in our DNA of, you know, that 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 toxic person that you look up to, your mom or your dad or your older brother, your older sister, whatever. Uh, you look up to them so much, and you want them to be that, like I said, the perfect family member right, or whatever, right, the ideal like situation. Yeah, and you want it to happen so much that even in your own mind, you start to force it. But you start to pick up traits because you look up to that person. You start to inherit these negative traits from that person. Right. Whether it be, you know, drugs or lying to other people to gain what you want, you know, being manipulative or whatever it is. But just... uh, That's what I kind of get from you. Yeah. Lying and manipulative. The shittiness. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, like... If you're battling that, it's okay to let that person go. Yeah, it is. And just, and just like we talked about, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. Yeah, and there's only one person. Tr- at the end of the day, there's only one person who is responsible for your life, and that's you. Yeah, for sure. You know, don't look at someone else when your life's in when you're in a shitty spot because I know life's hard. It is. Hard. It's fucking hard. Yeah. You know, but it uh. And when you cut that person off, they're going to make you feel like shit. Oh, yeah, they are. That's okay. But that's just another sign that you need to cut that person off. Yes, 100%. If you cut that person off and they're not apologetic. And they're not, like, trying to blame themselves. Yeah. They're trying to blame you for you cutting them off. And listen, man, it's okay if you cut that person off once. The first time they're apologetic, give them another chance. Yeah, right. But after the third or fourth time, it's like. At what point do you you gotta draw the line? They're, they're just not, taking they're, advantage. Yeah, of you. exactly. So, yeah, I think that's one well, thing. I got a feeling you have somebody specific in mind whenever you're saying this. I really, I mean, everybody has like. See, a, I don't. That's why I, I don't. But I just have noticed it. It's right, just something okay. I've picked up on. I don't really have anybody in mind, but it's just something I picked up on, and uh, I listen to a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, their family members and stuff that are kind of shitty, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, a couple months ago, I saw a person on Facebook who is a very intelligent person make make kind of talk about this and make make an argument for this. And I was like, you know what? I really agree with this. Yeah. And I started thinking about it even more. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's okay to cut a family member off. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, I mean, what is, we have the same blood in our veins, okay? That That's doesn't a, give yeah. you the right to be a fucking asshole. Right. There's, to plenty, me. there's plenty of people that you grow up with from like young childhood that end up you had to end up cutting off. What's different than that? Oh yeah. I had the exact same thing. Man, I had one of my best friends I had to cut off yeah, and, I know exactly you're you know, about. after yeah. high school. I mean, we were best friends for 13, 12, 13 years yeah. all the way from when I was in second grade to when I graduated high school. Yeah. This person, I mean, honestly, this person never really had a chance cuz his parents were so shitty. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And uh he was always getting in trouble. He was always doing stupid <clears throat> shit. But honestly, the kid never really had a fucking chance. Right. The dad was never around. The mom was always fucked up on pills and, and, and drinking and passed out in the damn bed because she had a shitty husband and was and in was a shitty life. Running around on her. Yeah. And, yeah. and probably beat her and shit too. Yeah. And they never gave the kids the attention they needed. Yeah. It's like, how does a kid, a, a child has no chance in that environment, yeah. you know? 
And every time the dad came home, the mom let the kids do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. The dad came home and he felt the need to like really discipline his kids because he's been gone. So he over he over disciplined. Yeah. So the parent, so the kids ended up resenting him for that. Yeah. And hating the fucking dad, and was always scared when dad's home. Oh, here comes the discipline and yeah. the non fun. And the mom was never. She was like whatever. She I'm, wasn't present. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I mean. Yeah. How was that kid at fault? And I think that's a lot of people like that. For sure. There's a lot of people like that. Yeah, because, I mean, you think about how many people have kids and they, don't, they wish they didn't have the kid. Or they oh, they have, have a kid with somebody you're not happy with. Yes, 100%. So, yeah. Yeah. And so it's just uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Know? It is. We uh, we got about three minutes left. I know I hate to be on a time crunch on this one, but uh, what time is it? it's 1247. Okay, well, let's take a bathroom break, and we'll come back to wrap this up. I figured we would just wrap it up right now, honestly. What are we, uh, hour and ten? Yeah, I mean, we got Red Zone coming on in like ten minutes, so I want to check my lineup, too, before we... Well, uh, let's get a cut, and then we'll... I mean, it just seems like extra steps. Uh, it does, but I kind of... <laughs> We're just going to be back for like two just... minutes. Okay, that's fair. We got the we got the Greenville Mile coming up, what? So, the official date. I like to call it the brew collar bar crawl. Oh, okay. So we're changing it back. We're changing. It. Okay, okay. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what is it? November nineteenth. Yes, is where Saturday. What we're thinking right now. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Sorry, this has to be such a short podcast. I feel like we were on to some good shit. Yeah, we were. We were. But yeah, we've got. Uh, I've got to edit it today because it's Sunday. So we got to get it out to you guys. You know, at a decent time. Yeah. And it's a it's a process. So. But we we're in here, man. Um, what else you got? We've got the Brew Car Bar Crawl coming up coming on the 19th. Up. Yeah. Um, we've uh, got some special stuff coming up also. I know we've been mentioning a lot. Yeah. Uh, one thing we're really excited to announce is that we will have guests coming up within the next, uh, probably within the next two months. Hopefully sooner than Hopefully that. Hopefully sooner than that, yeah. but it won't be longer than two months. Yeah. So we've got a lot of cool things coming up. Yes. And I'm excited for our listeners. And I'm excited for us because it's yes. going to make this show even more enjoyable. A hundred percent. If you've listened to the whole podcast, I feel like this is a real, I really enjoyed this. One. I did too. I did too. I, you know, I wanted and, to keep going, but really pressed on time. And the reason I kind of went to this direction is because the last one I enjoyed so much, this section of like the psychological stuff that we talked about. Yeah. That's why I wanted to go this direction on this one. Nice. So, uh, but yeah, man, it's been, it's been a good podcast. I wish it could be longer, but. That's okay. That's okay. We got to do another one today. Yeah, and, we do. Uh, it's, that one's going to be a long one. Yeah, we have to go back to back today because he has to go to Italy. Yeah, so, so we're, we're having a double up on a few, but. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be fun, though. Yeah, we, we don't we don't miss a beat. We yeah. got we got episodes yeah. for you guys every week. We so. try to get the content out. We're going to try to push even more content out coming soon. So. Yeah, but if you guys want to, uh, you know, support us in any way, like and subscribe, like share. And subscribe. Share, give us five stars on Spotify or give us one star on Spotify. Yeah. Anything? Give us what you think we should Yes, have. yes. We want honesty. Because that's what that's what the podcast is all about. It's yeah. transparency, being honest. So. Yeah. Hey, man, it's been a lot of fun. It has. I'm ready to eat. I'm yes. starving. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys. We love you. See yeah, you. See y'all.